the metal section with Brendan Small's Galacticon 2 Become the Storm. Now this, I wasn't sure what to expect. I knew it was going to probably be in the vein of something from Metalocalypse because he's the guy who created it all. But this was something else. Um, I Initially, it kind of... I, I don't know about you, Piss, but it kind of made me think... It was sort of like, you wanted more Death Clock? You got more fucking Death Clock. It seems very much to be Death Clock, but a bit more prog, I guess. That's what it comes to me, anyway. Yeah. Well, it was sort of like... That was... That was only an accurate description for the first couple of songs. You know, it initially opens up like that, it's with uh, Some Days Are For Dying. I mean, that is a very Death clock title. That is a very Death clock title, yeah. <laughs> that is My Name Is Murder, for example. <laughs> yeah. But as it progressed, it kind of took on the feel of um, the first Ziltoid album. Yeah, there were quite a few parts of the album that made me think... Devin Townsend. Everything can think of Devin Townsend, because Devin Townsend does everything, but... Yeah, but specific eras of Devin, because he has done everything, and as a consequence, you can say, well, it sounds like this era of Devin Townsend, because there is no way you could say that Ziltoid 1 and Ziltoid 2 were the same album. They're pretty different. Yeah. But, anyway, um... There was a very good blending of styles, particularly like that of the first Ziltoid album. Uh, especially in songs like The Ocean Galactics and Could This Be The End, which are personal favourites of mine. Which is likely not a surprise to you. No, yeah, it really isn't. You know what it took out to me most, probably, was um, The Ocean Galactic. Yeah. Also, some of the kind of solo material later on in Rebuilding a Planet we think a little bit of the um, second half of a failure from David Townsend. Yeah, I can definitely hear that. Um, That's one of the very more proggy songs in the album as well. So. Yeah. Uh, I found Rebuilding a Planet to be a really great closer to the album. Hmm. Um, predominantly because of it being an instrumental. It is rather impressive. The thing is, Deathlock's always had you know, the kind of musicianship and everything behind it. Yeah. And um, it was Turning out more and more to just be running in small, knowing how to compose a damn good song. Yeah. Uh, important thing to note uh, if you're familiar with Death Clock, it does have those vocals on it, but it also has the more clean vocals that Death Clock would occasionally use. It was quite interesting to see with the original Death Clock album, and then going on from there, he seemed to get more and more confident with what he was doing and more um, proficient with what he was doing as well. Mm. So it just seems to be just he's been learning as he goes through time. Yeah. Which is the most prog way of saying things. I keep doing very proggy things today. But, but yeah, this is definitely a solid example of knowing how to craft a damn good set of metal. Hmm. I mean, um, there are no filler songs. I mean, I'm not particularly a fan of Exodus, but I mean, Exodus is one of those songs. Hmm. So to remind myself which one is. Yeah. I mean, Exodus is one of those songs that benefits from repeated listens, but initially it feels a bit repetitive and kind of forgettable. Uh, I swear I've got what Exodus makes me think of, actually. Mm. I, as I say, it is one of those cases of repeated listens help it. I'm just thinking a little bit of Sepultura, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I can go with that. Uh... Uh, it's very difficult to talk about this sort of album because, well, for one thing, I wasn't even aware there was a galact. Well, I wasn't aware that Brendan Small did music outside of Death Clock. Well, presumably, when the whole Metal Locker Lips thing fell apart, he decided to uh, spin off. Um. Well, I think the first Galactic one came out before that happened. So. Uh, let me just check. Uh. Well, the first album was 2012, so. Then yeah, it was it was sort of a fair while before that. Um, yeah, I I mean I haven't heard the first Galacticon. I'll definitely be looking into it after this. But in its own right, 
I don't think you need to have listened to the previous album because this is a solid album in its own right. Well, I think you're losing anything by not having heard the other one, but there's no reason not to listen to the other one if you like this one. Because, you know, same composer, same dude, doing more of the same stuff. You can't really argue with that. Yeah. Um... Ah, concept. When describing his influences for the album, Small stated he wanted to draw upon themes by prominent science fiction authors. This is more of a Frank Herbert intergalactic war story with a splash of Flash Gordon high-stakes drama. A planet divided, coming together to defeat something bigger. Can music bring an embattled planet together, or are people really attracted to the calm lure of evil? Small also added, but in retrospect, this could also fit the Lovecraft world. There is dread, there is manipulation of senses, etc. We never would have guessed that it was a science fiction inspired album with a name like Galactical. <laughs> um, ah, fun fact, this is basically Death Clock, but without Death Clock's name. <laughs> the musicians on this album are the same as the members of Death Clock. Brendan Small had stated that Adult Swim has restricted his ability to use the Death Clock name in his music endeavours. Gene Hoglund said in an interview that it's a Death Clock album, it just can't be called Death Clock because of rights. I will say this, if you love Death Clock, you will love this record. The lyrics, the music and everything is Death Clock styled. <laughs> it's basically it's Death Clock, but it's so uh, Death Clock. <laughs> Well, it's... Clock death. Well, as I was saying, it's Ziltoid the Death Clocksient. <laughs> I will be making t-shirts. Uh, Although they might not be for sale, depending on rights and all that sort of thing. Especially because of rights and stuff. Yeah. I, I might just make a few t-shirts that will be free giveaway things. Or possibly part of the Patreon, uh, that sort of thing. Talking about this, one thing that makes this album immediately like a zero out of ten for me. Mm. Why does could this be the end not have a question mark at the end of it? Wait, what? Could this be the end? Does not have a question mark in it. It's quite been quite obviously a question. One moment. Let let's check. Ah, oh, the official track listing doesn't have a question mark either. I was just checking in case it was just the idiocy of the person who you know uploaded things. Nope, it literally just does not have a question mark on it. Yeah. But anyway, grammatical issues aside. You pedantic fuck. It's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I'd say... I'd give it a 4 out of 5. Um, I'd say between 3.5 and 4, yeah. It's pretty damn solid. Yeah. When I... I've liked Metal Eclipse from the start, and I've liked a lot of stuff, so more of it is always good to me. Oh, um, Death Clock fans will recognise... A particular quality in the opening of the Ocean Galactic in that that opening wine that it has kind of feels a bit like Mermaider. Mm. You know, I, I was almost expecting the drum beat from Mermaider to start playing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, definitely check this album out. Uh, I don't know if it's in HMV or anything like that. Hopefully it is. I can't say I've seen it anywhere. I've never been doing it. Finding Deathlock stuff in general has always been pretty tough. Yeah. So I don't know whether Brenda Small's products will be any easier to find. Uh, it might. You might have to order it through the official website. If I mean, I'll put a link in the description so you can go for that. Other than that, yep, it's it's a pretty good album. If you like Deathlock, then I don't see why you wouldn't enjoy this. Yeah. If you like metal, then give it a shot because it's metal. Yeah. You can't kill the metal, so... <laughs> it's definitely a good one if you're into prog metal. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of prog elements here in hell. Mm. And, well, we are both kind of suckers for prog metal. Possibly me more than you, but... Eh. Yeah, I'd say you probably are more towards the prog end of things. I do like a bit of prog. Uh, which makes it ever so ironic that I can't stand Opeth. <laughs> yeah, me well, I do rather well like them. But hey, there's always exceptions. But anyway, this is a great album. I, there are some songs on it, like Ocean Galactic, that in their own right, I would actually give 
six out of five too. So that's what kind of cements it as a four out of five for me, because there are songs that I find, to me personally, are perfect. That is essentially what the six out of five marker is representative of. It's the perfect songs or albums. Anyway, next, 